welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin MacLeod, Plate Mail Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Buckner. I am the primary dungeon master for a Knights of Roleplay and Adventuring podcast. This episode is our first advice episode that we like to call Just the Tips. And this one is titled Setting Campaign Expectations. Before we get into this episode, I'm going to play an audio promo from our friends at the Frostwalkers podcast. Hi, everybody. I'm B, the current Dungeon Master of the Frostwalkers podcast, here to tell you a little bit about our show. Uh, We are a officially one-year-old D&D 5e actual play uh, run by a group of young adults who are passionate about storytelling and their characters. The first campaign that we're currently in is set in the Arctic town of Timshul. The party's a group of misfits who, despite their many differences, become a family together and save the town from countless monsters and others enemies. There's a party hat wraith, an ice prince, and of course, tons of ice cream. (laughs) Um, You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and pretty much everywhere else you can find podcasts. (laughs) And if you want to follow us on social media, you can find us on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. We have a large and growing community, um, so come have fun with us. We tend to release episodes every other Monday, so make sure to keep an eye out. Yeah, that's about it from us. Uh, Campaign 2 is going to be a thing sometime soon. But until then, you have all all the time in the world to catch up on Campaign 1. So uh, we love you all, and we can't wait for you to hear more about what we're about. I'd like to thank the Frostwalkers podcast for the cross-promotion. They are also using our audio promo in one of their episodes. And now we'll return to our episode titled Just the Tips, Setting Campaign Expectations. So what I want to talk about is this is probably, I mean, it's for both Dungeon Masters and players, but this is something that really the Dungeon Master has to think about when he's getting ready to uh, run a game for a group of people. So the first thing that the Dungeon Master can do is to decide on the general theme and the setting for the campaign. It could be something that sort of like our Spacefarers campaign. It could be somewhat based on science fiction. It could be something based on gothic horror, like the Ravenloft setting. It could be Dark Sun. You know, it could be Greyhawk, Dragonlance. It could be all kinds of different things. It could be something that is completely homebrew, uh, that the Dungeon Master is making up the world and the setting themselves. But the Dungeon Master should be very clear with the players what the campaign setting is like and what the general theme of the campaign is because if the players aren't really excited about that then they're going to have to come up with some sort of a compromise maybe um, the dungeon master will have to modify things a little bit maybe the players will have to kind of go along to some degree but you know if you're a dungeon master and you're running the game for a group of players and they're really not excited about the theme then they're obviously not going to have a lot of fun. There's going to be problems. People probably aren't going to really be very excited. You know, their attendance might be spotty. And, you know, if you're, if you're a player in that game and you're not excited about it, well, it's not going to be as much fun. So everybody has to be on the same page with regard to the general theme and the setting of the campaign. Other things that the dungeon master might want to put forward, an estimate regarding the rate of advancement. There was a point when when what I was doing was I was having the party go up a level every single adventure. And that was kind of fun in some ways because you got to level a lot and you got to get to your new features. And since we play every two weeks, you know, people would get to 20th level, the maximum level, and then they'd get to play at that level for a little while before the campaign ended. And going at that pace, I was able to do like a full entire campaign from with characters from level 1 to 20 uh, each year, and I did that for three years. At the same time, the players did say that it would have been a little bit easier in some respects if they were able to kind of get 
into the groove of like being at fifth level for a little while before just jumping up to sixth level because they were jumping up every single adventure, which is part of the reason why in our current campaign, the Spacefarers campaign, that I'm actually using experience and I'm letting things kind of, you know, play out on, at a little bit of a slower pace as far as advancement goes. And that was a collaboration between my players and I where I tried something primarily because I had so many characters over the years that never got to 20th level that I wanted to allow my players to get there. But there was pros and cons to it, and we all talked about it, and we came up with basically deciding to do XP for the Space Rose campaign. So something else that the Dungeon Master can set forth with the campaign expectations is estimating the actual duration of the campaign. You know, is this campaign going to take about six months? Is it going to take about a year to complete, maybe? Maybe two years? You know, the Dungeon Master should give the players a general idea of how long that the current campaign is going to go, especially if people think that they may not, if the players think they may not be able to stay in the campaign in the group beyond, like, the next couple of years. Maybe, you know, they're planning on having a family or something, or they're going to be moving, or, um, you know, there could be a variety of reasons, but you want to make sure that you try to tell them, you know, approximately how long you think uh, that the campaign is going to last. Another thing for the DM to talk about with the players is the amount of combat versus role playing, because you have, you know, some players who just love to hit things and just love to kill things, and, and that's fine. But then you have other players who really want to role play, and sometimes that can make an interesting dynamic in a group if you have both those kinds of players in the group, because then you get to see people who are like just really wanting to fight and people who are like, ugh, another fight, I really want to role play. And as a dungeon master, that can certainly be challenging. And if you have an entire group that wants to do combat or an entire group that wants to do role play, then again, you know, as a dungeon master, you sort of have to figure out a way to make it fun for your players. But also you have to be kind to yourself as a dungeon master. And if you're not really in to just running, you know, combat after combat after combat, and you want there to be more role-playing, then you may, you know, want to look for a different group of players or at least talk to your current players and say, hey, you know, I really want to get into a little bit more of a story and not so much into combat. And this can work the other way too. If you love combat and your players really want a good story and, you know, you're just focusing so much on combat, it, it may make it a little bit difficult for them to enjoy the game. So you have to be kind of upfront about that talk about it with your players and come up with a compromise if that is if that is um, warranted. So high magic versus low magic is something else that you can talk about um, just to give the players an idea of whether or not there's going to be very, very low magic or very, very high magic. And again, people might like one versus the other. Another aspect is the level of conformity to the rules. And that's kind of a broad statement because for the most part, most campaigns that I've been in, people, you know, follow the rules as written, but it's very common for dungeon masters to have their own house rules. And, you know, sometimes the house rules will fly in the face of very specific rules. And you want to try to establish the level of conformity to the rules as the game begins so the players know what to expect because if they're trying to you know, design a character around certain concepts and you're modifying those concepts within the rules, then they're not probably going to get what they were hoping. So, you know, you have to be careful about that and you have to make sure that that you're very upfront about the rules that you're using, the rules that you're not using, and the rules that you're changing. And another thing to talk about with your players is table talk because everybody likes to you know, make jokes and laugh and have a good time. And of course, you don't want to stifle people and make them feel like they can't say anything or they can't talk. At the same time, when the dungeon master is reading descriptive text, it's very important for the players to give the dungeon master their full attention because the information is very important. So if you've got players that are just talking with each other while the dungeon master is reading this descriptive text, then they're going to be missing it and then they're going to be asking, well, I'm sorry, what was that? You know, and, you know, sometimes that can be an issue. Most of the time it's not, but it can also come up if the dungeon master and one of the players are going back and forth in a role play situation and you have two other players who are talking that that cross talk can be somewhat disruptive and it can happen if the dungeon master and a player are going through a turn in combat. So really all you have to do is just ask people, you know, to, 
try and pay attention while the descriptive text is being read. And if people are taking their turn in combat or if they're role-playing with the DM, that if you are going to talk to somebody next to you, that you just sort of, you know, lower your voice and kind of lean into the person and just try to do it in a way that is respectful for the DM and the other players and what is happening at the table. So you just sort of want to be upfront about table talk. There are a variety of other things that you can talk about when it comes to setting campaign expectations, but I wanted to take this moment to give this sort of advice from my perspective over the years. So I hope that uh, this has been very helpful and uh, I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay and spread the word through social media. We can be found on Twitter at Knights of RP and on Facebook and Instagram at Knights of Roleplay and on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Your help and support are greatly appreciated.